Meet bull kelp, Nereocystis lutkiana, the mermaid's bladder. Why it's named after a mermaid's bladder and not her beautiful flowing long hair is a total mystery to me. But what I do know is that these underwater forests of kelp always play with my imagination. I'm either diving into the wonder of it all as if living in the magical world of Disney, or being horribly tangled and strangled by the sheer chaos of it all. But the one thing we can count on is that bull kelp is delicious. Bull kelp is one of the fastest growing plants on the planet. It can grow over a foot a day and reach lengths of over a hundred feet. Even though its gas-filled tube and bulb brings its long fronds to the surface for photosynthesis, technically it's not even a plant. It belongs to a vast kingdom called Protista, where molds, phytoplankton, single-celled organisms like those amoebas, the creatures we learned about in Biology 101, are classified in. But unless you have an electron microscope, for us seashore foragers, it doesn't really matter. May and June are the best times in the Broughtlands to harvest the bull kelp. I like finding a place that's near the straits with more tidal movement to help keep the bryzones from growing on it. But this little patch is looking okay, and it'll give you a good example of what you're looking for. First, seek out the fronds without any encrusting bryzoa. These microscopic animals form flat colonies on many types of seaweed. And they kind of look like octopus suckers when they're large, but they're much harder to detect when they're smaller. I've tried and eaten them in desperation, and it kind of feels like chewing on styrofoam, but the presentation is terrible, so be sure to cut off the ratty looking ends of your fronds. I like to harvest about this size of bulb um, compared to the larger sizes, like this one. It's a little bit bigger. Um, just the medium, medium to small. It seems like it has the best uh, frond size and thickness. So this is about as wide as I like to harvest. You know, four, four inches, five inches, something like that. And the thinner, I like the thinner kind. When it starts getting older, the fronds can get very thick. Uh, tends to dry with a lot more salt content. But this is looking beautiful. When the kelp starts getting older, it'll start growing its spore patches. You can see these kind of rectangular shaped dark patches. They get really big. And it's still edible at this stage, if that's what you can find. I tend to like getting it just before its spores, but um, I've had good success in drying it with the spore patches as well. You can see this one part of its spore, spores already fell out. And this is how they reproduce. When you're selecting your wild edibles, imagine yourself at the grocery store picking out the best apple the way we do. You'd be surprised at the rugged looking plants I've seen some people choose. Care must be taken when harvesting any seaweed to ensure its regrowth. Though the bull kelp is an annual growing from spores every year, Many are not, and I've seen traditional ancient nori gardens nearly destroyed from improper harvesting. So please, do not pull a seaweed from its root-like holdfast. Instead, hold the plant and nip off the ends, always leaving some portion of the fronds behind. And believe me, it doesn't take many plants to create an enormous workload of drying, so be careful you don't over-harvest. But if you do, your garden will love the extra nutrition. Bull kelp is the mineral storehouse of the sea. It's an excellent source of potassium, sodium, calcium, magnesium, sulfur, nitrogen, iron, zinc, boron, copper, manganese, chromium, selenium, bromine, vanadium, nickel, <laughs> to name a few. And it's full of vitamins A, Bs, especially B12, C, D, E, and K essential fatty acids, and antioxidants. And it's also one of the best natural food sources of iodine, which is an essential element for our thyroid function. The elgin found in brown seaweed can even be used to remove heavy metals from our body. I mean, this plant must be one of the latest superfoods on this planet. And there's so many forest gump ways to use it. 
You can pickle it, salsa it, relish it, sprinkle it, boil it, make chips out of it, bake it, noodle it, dry it, crumble it, make rope out of it, wrap food in it, make baskets with it, steam bend wood in it, create music with it. <laughs> Smack someone with it. Tie your boat to it. Avoid rocks with it. Your knees. And drink beer from it. Oh, it's a geyser. So enjoy the wild, wonderful world of kelp.